Father, I want to thank you that your spirit lives within us. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the only teacher. We yield unto you, Lord God, and ask for revelation knowledge. Holy Spirit, more than I could communicate, I ask that you, by your spirit, communicate to our hearts today. And I thank you for that in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, Design for God's Presence, part 15. Oh, you're probably wondering, when is this ending? When are you switching gears, Pastor John? <laughs> well, don't you want to know how you're created? How you were designed to be? I think, I think we should insist a little bit longer on this. We, were, we, we talked about what you were not designed for, and now we're talking about what you were designed for. Amen. And we, we, we had awesome titles like, you know, Designed to be Loved. I mean, I, I love that message. Amen. And I, I, I love going back and listening to, to those messages. Amen. I, I learn things as, as I go uh, through my own messages sometimes. Amen. I think, though, you know, last Sunday as we started sharing uh, on... Designed to Restore, uh, it, and it, it was part one as we started talking about restoration. I think that this is crucial. This is probably one of the most important messages uh, that you could ever hear. Uh, see, the scripture says a lot about being skilled in, in the teaching of righteousness or restoration. And you'd be surprised. You go out there and you, you find people saying all kinds of things about righteousness, but they don't call it restoration. They kind of call it a standard of living or something that God requires of you, some expectation, high, ex high level expectation that he might have from you. When you go to the, to the definition from the Greek and the Hebrew, and you start understanding there is no condemnation in that word. There is no, uh, you have to pay in that word. All that God wa ever wanted was for us to be restored. And as we are restored, we become restorers. I said this last time that God does restoration and he does it through his body. As you are using your body to do things, uh, you know, we, we're not saying, well, my hand did that or uh, my mouth said that. We, we, j we said that. We, we assume that our body is our own, right? So when God does something, he does it through his body, and we are the body of Christ. I know this is basic. But you'd be surprised how many people have not understood this. They don't view themselves as being the body of Christ. They don't understand their union with him. They don't understand that God is the head of the body. And when he does things, he does it through his body. Amen. He does it through us. So now we're going to talk today uh, we're going to continue on that same uh, path of restoration. Amen? Um, is your mindset punitive or restorative? This is what we talked about last time. And it was, it was quite a bit to share uh, in a sense that I think that it, it helped us without condemning ourselves to... Uh, to really look at ourselves and see uh, where do we fall, in which category are we are, you know. And here's, here's what I want to tell you, you know. We, we need to understand that we have been created to, to uh, participate in restoration. We have been created to function by love. See, when the fall happened, think about this. Uh, Adam and Eve, they ate out of the tree of the good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. And I, I, I made the statement last time that, that 
perfect love cannot really exist in an environment of good and evil because good and evil will create separation. Well, you may say, well, it's not. Yes, well, Lord, I, I mentioned this. I found myself saying this last time. Uh, Lord, I thank God, I thank you that I'm not like this. A sinner, are, are you, you understand what I'm saying? The idea that we, we, we started talking about that because we went to 1 Corinthians 13, and, and we, I made the statement that God, uh, that, that love, or God, does not rejoice in iniquity, uh, but rejoices in the truth. Now, notice again, and, and I don't mind repeating this because it's worth repeating. When God says this, God does not rejoice in iniquity, but he rejoices in the truth. That makes iniquity a lie. Okay? So the truth is, the truth is you're not in iniquity. God does not rejoice over iniquity. He rejoices when you understand the truth about yourself. And that is that you are loved. Amen. So love does not rejoice in iniquity. And then I, we kind of self-examined ourselves uh, to see where are we. Are we rejoicing when someone does something wrong? Because it automatically makes us feel better about ourselves. Because, after all, we're not like that. Now, we haven't done anything better to be better, but just by the fact that they've done something wrong, we feel better about ourselves. Now, you realize that that comes out of insecurity. It comes, uh, it's not really a, a, a good place, but though, you know, at some point in time, if we're honest, we may have all been there. You know, I, I, I already confessed last time. So, uh, and, and I said, I'm the pastor, so hey, you know, <laughs> you understand what that means. Now, let's, let's look a little bit more at love, because I, I, I think this is important for us to see. Uh, it says that it thinks no evil. It, it doesn't keep score. It does not, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not about you've done it over and over again and this is wrong and I'm right and you're wrong. And it, 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 there's no, love doesn't count. It doesn't hold anything against you. Thinks no evil, keeps no records of evil, however you want to put it. Now, I know that if you know God is love, that's probably not how God was presented to you. And therefore, there's a, there's a punitive mindset that we've been raised in. And we've been raised in this punitive mindset, especially in church. And we need to get out of it, and we're going to talk today about benefits of moving from a punitive mindset to a restorative mindset. Why is it important? Well, first of all, you start thinking like God. Well, let me read to you one more thing out of 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 13, and this is verse 8. It says, charity never fails, or love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So, and he comes on. He kept on talking, and at the end, this is the conclusion of, the, of that chapter, and it says, And now abides faith, hope, and charity, or love. These three, but the greatest of this is love. So now, you, you're familiar with the chapter. I mean, you've been at the weddings. You heard this. Uh, they, uh, you, you, you probably heard Thousands of, of sermons coming out of 1 Corinthians 13. 
But what I'm telling you here, what I want to point out to you is that love never fails. We even have a song that we sing that I love, you know, um, that your love never fails, right? Now, it never gives up. I, I love it. I, I'm, I'm almost, uh, I'll, I'll almost start singing that song, right? Uh, but what I'm telling you is if you think, see, we say things, but then we don't really meditate on it. We don't think about what is this? What's the meaning of this? What do you mean love never ends? Love never fails. Uh, you, you know, what, what is the, the meaning of it? It means that love always is. It means God's attitude will never, ever change towards you. He will never cease to be love. He will always love you with the same passion, with the same intensity, with the same greatness, uh, with the same depth, with the same height. However you want to put it, it will never, ever end. It will never, He will never stop loving you. It, in other words, love is eternal. And I think that as we understand that, as we start getting to understand that, it will help us to move from a punitive mindset to a restorative mindset. Because you have loved ones in your family, don't you? And all that you want for your loved ones is everything to be okay. You want them to be restored. It does not really matter what they've done. What you want is them to be restored. You want their restoration. And that is the heart of God. That is the mindset of God. This is how God thinks. When it comes to you, when it comes to everyone, all that he has ever wanted was for us to be transformed by his love for us to be restored and in a place to bring restoration. Now, here are benefits from moving from a punitive uh, to a restorative mindset. From man's way to God's way. This mindset is key. I mean, uh, here's, here's what I'm telling you. You know, you, you go to places and you hear messages... And they teach you man's justice or man's, re man's way of restoring or man's way of doing things or m man's way of thinking. And then they tell you, but do this, Jesus said to do this. And you heard people say, well, that is impossible. Well, it is impossible with a punitive mindset. You'll never, I mean, it's always going to be a huge effort. And if you're going to ever manage to do it, it's going to be a miracle. You know, uh, but the truth is, you, if you change the way you think, if you embrace God's thinking, then, see, thoughts will release feelings in you, in your heart. If you have bad feelings about someone, it's because you have thought bad thoughts about that person. If you have good feelings about someone, it's because you have good thoughts about that person. How about if we would only have good thoughts? Or let's just move out of good and evil and just have love thoughts. How about that? Unconditional love. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, and if you're at the Oasis, you probably heard me talk about this before. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And if you start thinking about this, the difference is made in the mindset that you come from, the foundation that you come from. The reason God's thoughts and God's ways are so much higher is because He is love. And His ways are ways of love. His ways are not ways of punishment, torture, uh, 
keeping score. God does not think in those terms, so therefore His ways are higher than our ways. Now that doesn't mean that we cannot embrace the mentality of heaven, the mindset of heaven. You see, in, in, if you were to be today, right now in heaven, your mindset uh, would, uh, you, you would find out there is no reference for sin there. There is no mindset of you got to pay this, you got to do that, you got to, there is nothing like that. God is love and the environment of heaven, of the kingdom of God is an environment of love. Now, let's see a few of the benefits of thinking like God. Now, think like God is important. Because the minute you start thinking like Him, you start acting like Him. You, your, his love is free to flow through you and through me. And imagine, can you imagine a place where you go and you're not judged? You're not looked down on. Uh, you are not disconsidered. You are never slandered, never gossiped about. Uh, nobody ever thinks evil about you. Everyone around thinks good. Will you think you went to heaven? Well, I think heaven can come here. You don't need to wait for this until you get to heaven. You can live this now and here, but you're going to say, Am I not going to lose this? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So what happens when you embrace God's way of thinking? So what happens to you when you embrace this? Uh, when, when you start thinking about restoration, you're always, whenever, whenever you hear something wrong about, that anyone's done, you, you immediately start praying for them. You start blessing them. You start speaking good things about them. You don't rejoice in iniquity, but you rejoice in the truth about them. Amen? You align your mind, yourself with God's heart and God's mind. See, you've got to understand, God's way of thinking is a thinking of love. He thinks in terms of love. God is not punitive. Now, if we just got this point, if we just got this understanding that God is not out there to punish you, you are going to say, Pastor John, what are you? You take punishment out of the minds of the people. Who knows what they'll do? Well, that's the fear that a lot of people, uh, that a lot of people have. But then are they afraid of God, or they are afraid of punishment. Which one is it? I think they're afraid of punishment. And of God, because they think God is a punishing God. But what we need to see is that when you align yourself with God's heart and God's mind, and at the end of this message, you'll be convinced that God is not a punishing God, that He's restorative. Because I'm, I'm going to bring this to a, to a, a conclusion. Amen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Why? Because your heart and your mind is already aligned with God. Amen. For the prayer ministers, this is good. Whenever you pray for people, if you just abide in God and speak out of his heart and his mind, which is restorative, always restoration, then you never go wrong. Amen. It allows you to believe and experience God's love and forgiveness. See, the punitive mindset will not let you experience God's love. If you think you need to pay, if you need God is after you to get, take a payment from you, if you think that, uh, if, you, if you believe uh, that God is loving you if you do this, 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 and this, or if you didn't do this, this, and this, then you're in a, in a punitive mindset, and it does, that does not allow you to experience God's love and forgiveness. Are you with me? That's, that is a, a, a very, uh, very bad point. Now, now here, here's what I'm telling you. And their sins and their iniquity I will remember no more. 
This is God speaking. This is God's way of thinking. He doesn't just say that their sins and their iniquity will I forget. He's not forgetting. He's not a forgetful God. But he remembers no more. When you remember no more, it means you made a decision. You don't want to remember that. Uh, that's, it's different. When you start thinking about uh, how God looks at sins and iniquities, he says, I don't want to remember them. And then you find people going to God every day. And when they start praying, they go through half hour or an hour of confessing what? Their sins and their iniquities. And God says, I don't want to remember this. I don't want to talk about, I don't know about you. But if I had a friend that I'm talking to and I say, well, whatever you do, just don't talk to me about this. And then every time you, I would meet that friend, they would start talking to me about the same thing. How long do you think that friendship would, would last? But see, with God, I mean, even though we've done this for years, He is still there for us. He's still our friend because He is love. Amen. But He wishes that we would not remember Him, remind Him anymore about our sins and our iniquities because that's not what He's interested in. Amen. Now, in case, in case you're judging me, this comes from Scripture. And it's not just in one place. It's in more than one place. <laughs> Amen. Uh, now, what happens when you embrace God's way of thinking or the restoration, the restorative mindset? It eliminates fear of punishment from your life. You no longer think in terms, well, I, I don't know what I've done to deserve this. You've done nothing to deserve that. God doesn't think in those terms. You should not have the fear of punishment following you all the days of your life. You, it doesn't say that fear of punishment will follow you all of the days of your life. It says, what? Goodness and mercy shall follow me. <laughs> Amen. Goodness and mercy follows me. It, do, it, do, it, it does not a fear of punishment doesn't follow me all of the days of my life. That's not the will of God. The will of God is that His goodness and His mercy would follow you and I all of the days of our lives. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. It releases the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Now, it, this is the truth. If you are not thinking, if you're not looking down on yourself and being condemned all day long, and you, you, you're, you're afraid that God is after you to get you, uh, you see, what that does, it show me someone that is condemned, that is afraid, uh, that is full of joy. No, no. And we have some people that are full of joy in this church. And I like that because joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? And, 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 and the love of God and the peace of God and, and all of that is released in our lives when we switch from one mindset to the other. Amen? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Say, I'm free, I'm free. from the law of sin and death. My mindset is that of the Spirit of life. Not of sin and death. Amen. It causes you to genuinely love, appreciate, help, and bless, which means to empower others. Now, this will be one of the fruits that you're going to experience in your life. This is what's going to happen to you. And it's not because you're going to force yourself to do it. 
There's a whole text in Isaiah 61 where it, it tells you what the trees of righteousness are doing, how they restore cities, how they restore the desolation of generations. And that is something that it's happening genuinely out of love. But that happens when you move from this mindset of punishment and uh, and, 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 and fear into this restorative mindset. Amen? We have, we have a lot more to go, so I'm going to go a little bit faster through them. It removes all prejudice from your life, thereby releasing the kingdom of God on earth. So if you, if you ever had any problem with prejudice, well, you may not have, you know. And you'd be surprised, uh, you know, how we think we don't have a problem until we're faced with some challenging situations uh, where we think, I wish they didn't do that. How, you know, am I supposed to love this person as well? Well, see, that shows me we, we did not move from one mindset to the other. We need to allow the kingdom of get, uh, God to remove all prejudice, all, like, like, I mean, you'd be, you look, we live in a country of, of a variety of, of people. See, I mean, it, it may be easier when you live in a country where there's just one kind of people, and, and they, what, even there you find differences. You know, communism kind of tried to make everybody the same but themselves. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, now, the mindset of restoration glorifies God. Here's where that comes from. Here's how I know. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to the bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. And here's the vengeance. To comfort all that mourn. I love that part. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't stop here. It explains to you what vengeance is and, and explains to me. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. That's the vengeance of God. The oil of joy for mourning, that's the vengeance of God. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that is the vengeance of God. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He, the Lord, might be glorified. So how is God glorified? By bringing restoration. By restoring us. That's how He gets glory. Amen. So embracing a mindset of restoration will bring glory to God. So if you are on the punitive side, you need to decide, well, do I want to stay here or I want to move over where everyone and everything will bring, bring glory to God? Obviously, that's the place to go. It does away with hypocrisy. Man, you could let your God down. You don't need to pose anymore. To anybody. To, uh, you, you don't need to behave a certain way. You know, you don't even need to change your voice when you pray to God. Oh, okay. <laughs> I used to do that. I used to do that. I, I would come home and my sister would tell me, I don't know, I, I, John, is, he, she would tell me. And, and I knew it's the truth. I didn't like it. But she would say, whenever you got it, get in the pulpit, your voice changes. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Not to say when you're praying. I'm going, okay, okay, enough, enough, you know. I'm going to try to tone it down. I'm going to try to not change it to, to bring the holy voice in the pulpit. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> It allows you to be vulnerable and honest, just like I am now, right? <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> Amen. So 
and, and here's, when you can be yourself, you don't have to be somebody else. You don't have to wear a mask. You, you, you can be vulnerable and honest. That is powerful. It creates an environment where real lasting restoration can occur. If you know nobody is, is, is condemning you about anything, then you could be open about your life and real restoration could occur in your life. It enables people to forgive others freely. What? The mindset of restoration completely, permanently, and unconditionally just as God has forgiven us. You're going to say, oh, I don't really believe God has forgiven us that way. Well, that's how God forgave. I could give you scripture after scripture. I could take you to Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 1 verse 7 that tells you that he has forgiven you because of the riches of his grace. I could take you to 1 uh, John chapter 1 and verse, uh, let's see, what, what verse is it? 12, I believe it is, where he has forgiven you uh, because uh, of his name's sake. I could take you to Colossians chapter 3. I believe it's verse 14, 15, somewhere in there. And you find out that he has forgiven all your trespasses. He didn't pick and choose which ones he, he's going to forgive. He has already forgiven you completely. He, forgive you, he forgave you forever, permanently, basically, unconditionally. There are no conditions, you know, and he's done it for free. He's got no payment for forgiving you. He's just a forgiving God. And now, th this is a concept that a lot of people don't have. But you've you, you got to understand that God is love. Love keeps no records of evil. Love seeks no payment for anything. Amen? It releases compassion and goodness rather than a desire for revenge. Man's way. Or humankind way. Okay, so if you don't find yourself, if you see something that's done to you and you're reacting, uh, wanting some payment or some, some revenge or some, uh, you don't have to feel condemned. All you need to do is say, Lord, I need to move from this punitive mindset. I, I want to release compassion and goodness. Now, this, the Lord lives in you. He wants to release that. It's just our mind stops that. Our mind kind of gets in the way and says, no, 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 no. You're going to make, uh, make a fool of yourself. I mean, these people take advantage of you. Can't you see this? And I, I know I'm stepping into some territory here. But the truth is, God's way is best way. you you got to understand, he's done this forever, and he never failed, and he never will. And he knows what he does. You got to believe that God will uphold you. Amen. It confirms that we believe in the finished work of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here's what the punitive mindset will say. The punitive mindset will not confirm that we believe that the work is finished. If we still want someone to pay, that we don't believe it's already paid, that our conscience was already satisfied. We still are looking for some uh, payment to be done. And that's denying what Jesus did on the cross. I know this gets serious. It confirms we believe. Now, moving into a, restor a restorative mindset, it confirms we believe in the new creation and being born again from above. Now, if we don't believe that, if we were still in a, in a fallen mindset, we don't really believe people are born again. We don't really believe that Jesus started a new creation. It reveals that violence is not God's way. Amen. Oh, man. I mean, this, we could preach a whole sermon on this. You see, see what I'm telling you is anger has its roots in the punitive mindset. In a judgmentalism, into self-entitlement. All of those things come to surface, and it, it's because we believe that violence would be God's way. Well, 
God is not a violent God. God is not a punishing God. And the benefit is that if you believe that God is a restorative God, then you're not going to allow violence in your life. And violence has no room. And anger has no, nothing to build on. I mean, a, a while back, I, uh, it's been quite a bit, though, when we shared on this. But see, when Jesus says, when Jesus is saying, basically, if you hate your brother in your heart, you have already committed murder. You have already killed him. Well, what is he saying? He, he is basically saying if you have enough hatred in your heart for someone and, all the, in, and the environment changes, you might end up doing this, killing that person. Now, you're going to say, no, no, no. Well, we may destroy his character or something or her character, but, not, you know... <laughs> <laughs> but listen to me. Uh, if, you, if you look at water in a liquid form, gas, uh, vapor, or it's frozen, okay, it's still water. The only thing that changed was the environment. Hmm? So if there's steam... <laughs> okay, it could end up in ice. It's just a matter of environment. So we need, but in order for that not to happen, we need to eliminate this. We need to understand that God is in restoration. He is not with, vi violence has nothing to do with God. God was not the one violent on Jesus, killing him on the cross. Mankind was. Peter says, you crucified the Lamb of glory. The Lamb of God. The Lord of glory. You did this. You, or you gave him into wicked hands to do it. Into those pagans' hands to crucify him. It was not God crucifying Jesus. It was mankind or that portion of mankind. I was just about to say those Italians. <laughs> We're going to have Italian theme next Sunday. <laughs> Don't bring that in. <laughs> well, you know, I can say that because uh, I'm from Romania and we kind of originate from Italians. So uh, well, what I used to tell Italians is that Romanian language is improved Italian. They don't I found out they don't really like that. <laughs> okay, why do people remain in a punitive mindset? Because after all these 15 points of, of showing you how much better are God's ways or God's mindset or God's heart versus mankind or humankind, uh, you think, well, why would anyone want to stay in a punitive mindset? Oh, there are many reasons, and I'm not going to give you 15, but I'm going to give you a few. One is ignorance. This message is not preached. Now, I don't know about you, but if you go in a regular church on a Sunday morning, uh, this is not what you hear. You probably hear, you rotten sinner, you better repent, or else he's going to smack you over the head with a two-by-four, and... oh. Man, I, I could be good at that. <laughs> but it wouldn't produce any good. Amen? Now, why people stay in a punitive mindset? It's fear. What if I lose? Will I be punished? What if I mess up? What if people mess up? Well, didn't we all? I mean, do... Do we really think that a, a, a changing from a mindset to the other uh, will empower more failure 
Well, we just said that love never fails. Amen? Now, it's unbelief. What if this will cause me to disobey God? That's an honest question. People think, well, if I'm not in this, if I don't keep score on myself, if I relate to myself based on love, then who knows what I'm going to do? Well, I'm taking you back to the new nature. We need to go back to square one. Do you really believe you're born again? Do you really believe he lives in you? Because if you do, you're not going to do crazy stuff. Amen? This confirms their unbelief in the finished work of the cross and the new creation. That's the truth. That's the root of it. And I, I just kind of gave you three uh, points here. Ignorance, fear, or unbelief. Which one would you pick? Say, no, thank you. Most people don't fear God, they fear punishment. Are, are you with me on that? They might say the fear of the Lord. Well, the fear of the Lord in those, in, 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 in those verses is the beginning of wisdom. It means that you are so in awe with God, that you are so amazed by Him... That you want to sit at his feet and learn all day long. You are amazed with his knowledge. You are amazed with how good he is. But most, most of all, you are amazed of his love. And you just want to sit there and soak it all in. That's what the beginning of wisdom is. It, it, that's, what, that's the kind of fear that God talks about. It's not the fear that scares you and draws you away from God. It is the fear that draws you closer to Him. And you say, Lord, I, I want to learn from you. It's, if you want, it's a reverential fear. Amen? People tend to serve God out of fear of punishment rather than unconditional love. How many of you are aware of that? How many of you could say, I've been there, I've done that? Because I've done it not for a long time. And when I realized what I've done, I, 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 I went through such a deep, I, I, deep repentance, you would say. The kingdom of God is righteousness or restoration. Amen? Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Notice that the first thing that God says about his kingdom, or Paul says about God's kingdom, is that it's righteousness. Or is restoration. And restoration is followed by peace. Restoration is followed by joy. Amen. Matthew 5, now this will convince you that this is, you're going to say, Pastor John, all that is nice and dandy, a lot of things you told us, a lot of benefits that we see, but is God really having a mindset that is not punitive, but restorative? Well, let's see what Jesus has to say. And in order to do that, we're going to start at the end of this chapter, so I'm going to move through them. To verse 48. Oops. What did I do? Okay. Verse 48 says this. Be ye therefore perfect. Now the first thing that comes through your mind. Uh, uh, there ain't no way I can be perfect. Yes you can. It says even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. So. With this, this is the conclusion, so we start at the end, and we're going to go through the text with this thought in mind. Jesus is presenting the perfection of our Father in heaven. In other words, Jesus is presenting to us the nature of God, amen, or how God is. Let's see, do I know how to go back now? Yeah. Okay, 
Matthew 5, verses 38 to 48. You can find this in your Bible. It's, that's where I took it from. Okay? <laughs> and it says this. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. What is this? Old Testament. Old Testament but what kind of mindset? Punitive. It's punitive. An eye for an eye. I want payment. A tooth for a tooth. This is what I'm looking for. This is the punitive mindset. Jesus says, but I say unto you that you resist not evil, but what's, whosoever smites thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. What is he saying? Don't keep score. Don't move from a punitive mindset into a restorative mindset. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have your cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twine. Go to, right? Give to him that asks of thee, all right, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away. You have heard, now, in other words, it tells you just give, don't judge. Don't try to make a decision based on your mind. Make a decision based on love. You have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, in other words, it used to be, and this is man's way, I love those that love me, I hate those that hate me, and I do it with passion. But <laughs> Jesus says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. When, you, when I start saying this to people, they go, this is impossible. You know why? They're still in a punitive mindset. It's not impossible if you move over to God's camp, to heaven's way of thinking, right? Bless them that curse you. But you know what that says? Really, we started saying that this shows you how God is like. I say unto you, love your enemies. Number one, he loves his enemies. He can't tell you to love your enemies if he doesn't do it. He would be a hypocrite. But God is not a hypocrite. God is telling you, Jesus is telling you, this is what perfection looks like. This is how your Father in heaven is. Amen. Bless them that curse you. Know, you heard this. You heard people say, don't you curse God. Because what he's going to do? You, you don't want to do that, man. I, now, I'm not telling you to do it. Okay, I'm not encouraging you to curse God, but what I'm telling you is that if you curse Him, He will bless you. <laughs> this is different than what we've been taught. <laughs> we've been taught that if we, if we curse God, then we're doomed. And this is, we're done forever. No more, you, you're gone. This is it. You, you just messed up. Too bad. God's love can't reach you anymore. Okay? Do good to them that hate you. That means that God does good to them that hate him. I mean, I just... This is what the Lord is saying. This is the Lord Jesus saying this. And he's not asking you to do something he himself is not doing. He proved it on the cross. Amen. Right? Uh, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Did he do that? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen? He did not just say. He lived it. And persecute you. Was he persecuted? Oh, yeah. Now you're going to say, well, I'm not convinced yet. Hold on. Just hold on a second. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Now he connects this. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. So whether you're good or you're evil, the sun rises over everyone. And that proves to you that that's how God is. That he loves his enemies. Amen? 
and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. This is his nature. This is who he is. He is love. Now, it, this is not just something that Pastor John believes. This is something that Jesus taught. And it's in scripture, and you can find it. And not only he taught it, he lived it out. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even publicans so. Now, he goes on to say, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. What he is basically saying, this is how God thinks, this is his nature, and he, this is how he lives. And if we get that understanding, and we understand that Jesus lives inside of us, then the only life he knows to live is a life of love. The only life he knows to live is a life of acceptance, full of love, full of compassion. If he wants to take revenge, he's going to release his goodness. He's going to put his goodness on steroids because this is how good God is. And I'm telling you, I, I'm not doing it justice, if you will. I'm not teaching this good enough. I'm presenting this to you now. I'm banking on the fact that the Holy Spirit will reveal to your heart what I really want to communicate. Is this is not something that you just learn theoretically. This is something that needs to be experienced. It's, it, it's something that you need to, to get to know God. You, you drive along and, and he's telling you things like, uh, you know, you're the joy that was set before me when I went to the cross. You drive around and he tells you, you bring joy to my heart. I dance over you. I'm thrilled about you. I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy about you. Now, when we start getting that understanding, it, it's going to help us to move on from a punitive mindset. And I cannot insist long enough on this. I cannot tell you long enough how important this is. This will transform your life. I know it's done wonders for me. And I know where I came from. I, I, I'm telling you, in my life, I was so self-righteous and so judgmental and so looking down on people because I lived a good life. I mean, yeah, it was a lot of self-effort. It was fasting six days out of seven. It was praying eight to ten hours a day. And now, in, in Paul's words, I speak like a crazy man now. Okay? But the truth is, I was full of judgmentalism. Full of looking down on people. I'm better than you. Um, you, you know, I'm, I would... Rejoice when someone did something wrong because it you know, would make me look better. Well, after all, I'm not like that sinner. You know? But love will totally change the way you process things, the way you think, the way you act. People are not going to know what to do with you. Talk about, man, no matter what I do, they still love me. Hallelujah. Okay. This text shows us, let me see. Let me go a little closer. These lights are not good for me. <laughs> that when we allow his nature and mindset to be released through us, it will transform our lives. The lives of our loved ones and the lives of our enemies. It will have a total impact on the world. Restoration will. Folks, we tried the other system for so long. 
we've been in that punitive mindset and that I like to call it the fallen mindset mindset if Adam fell and Eve fell from love into good and evil then we need to move back to love we need to leave criticism and judgmentalism and prejudice and all of those things by the wayside and just start loving people for love is eternal so how many of you would want to move from a, a punitive mindset into a restorative one most of you do that's good <laughs> that's good I, I, I like that well let's just pray amen father I want to thank you that by your spirit you're reaching into our hearts Lord God and I want to thank you, Lord God, for transforming our lives, our thought process, our heart, our mind. Lord, we just want to be so enveloped by your love, so surrounded by your love, so experiencing your love, that restoration is all that flows out of us. That a mindset of restoration a mindset of righteousness start permeating our environment to the deepest level. Father, I want to thank you for that in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.